It's time to take a look at Fujifilm's new GFX 50S, an incredible medium format camera. If you've not signed up for our business coaching class, it's time to take a look at what the materials there can do for you. We've got 16 hours of materials that will help you to change the direction of your business, organize it, and get new clients. We also have once a month, you get to mentor with me where you call in, we'll talk about the issues you're facing and help you overcome them and help you to move forward. So go to thuslinerlens.com and sign up for our business coaching class today. Let me help you out. Hi, this is JP Morgan. It's time for another camera review here on The Slant Lens. So, JP Morgan and... Kenneth Merrill. And we've got Michael Babenko with us from Fujifilm. Tell us what you do at Fujifilm, Michael. I am the Professional Markets Training Manager. I've been with Fuji now almost 26 years. Have you really? Yep. So you've seen this camera. We're talking about the new Fujifilm GFX 50S. You've seen this camera kind of from birth, have you not? Well, not quite from birth. I was actually surprised. Uh, I didn't. I didn't even know we were making it uh, until about a year ago. Oh, really? But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so all of a sudden, they dropped in your lap and said, "Then said, here it is." Well, tell us about the camera. Just give us some basic statistics. I mean, we've got a lot of uh, information to go over here. Um, there's a few specs about this camera we want to <laughs> review. So today's review is really just about getting a good sense of what are all the specs about this camera. We're going to look at some of the uh, footage, uh, some of the images that uh, Michael shot, which are gorgeous. And there's some things, uh, kind of perspective I had about that from what I saw. Then we're going to shoot an ISO test and uh, just kind of look at some imagery from the camera. So as I understand it right now, before we go any further, we have complete capabilities with regards to capture, but we don't have the ability to convert the RAW yet. That's coming. RAW conversion isn't quite available. The camera will be available at the end of February. Okay. Uh, so it's not like far away, weeks, yeah. um, but uh, the raw conversion isn't available just yet. Will be, of course, you know, in time. Okay. So in time, you're talking about it'll be a plug-in through uh, Adobe Photoshop, and uh, we do know for a fact that uh, Ad Adobe will support it 100%. Um, we have our own conversion software that uh, works through Silky Picks, and other third-party converters will be available as well. Okay. So today we'll just be shooting JPEGs. JPEGs. Which is totally well, we'll fine. Shoot well, we'll shoot raws. Well, and later we'll too. be able to convert yeah, yeah, them. Right. We won't be able to convert yeah. them for what we're doing looking at today. But right. right. The images you'll see today will be JPEGs, but and as I, mean, I as time, I've assured you, as I've assured you, the JPEGs are beautiful. <laughs> Here it comes. Give it a try. Give it a try. Well, here's the thing about photography: is if you light it, if it's what you see is what you get with these cameras. If you light it, and if you have the image you want when you capture it, then you don't have to bother as the much work the is done. Yeah, exactly. So let's run down. Just give us the, the out of the box specs about the camera. Just go through the basic things that everyone should know. And people are going to be most interested to hear about. Uh, things people are going to be most interested to hear about, like I said, a besides it being mirrorless, which um, first of all, you know, makes it quiet, uh, reduces camera shake, uh, which is very important for something at this resolution. It's fifty one megapixels of resolution. Uh, so that makes it very, very sensitive to camera movement because you can't be hide behind low res to hide that um, any kind of movement. So not having a mirror slapping up and down definitely helps with that. Um, there is an electronic shutter option if you want to be 100% silent. So in that case, what would be the benefit of the focal plane shutter versus an electronic one? Uh, the benefit, like I said, is flash sync. Um, electronic shutter, this is, um, well, you, would, would be subject to the rolling shutter artifacts. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the upside of electronic shutter is you can go all the way to a 16,000th of a second. Yeah. So in bright light, or if you really, really want fast capture, you would use that. Um, but uh, it would, it does read top to bottom in the electronic right, shutter mode, right. so you mm -hmm. would have that. We do have something called the electronic front curtain shutter which is also uh, some other smaller cameras use this as well, mm -hmm. which is a hybrid between the electronic shutter and the actual focal plane shutter where it leaves the front curtain parked open. Hmm. So that cuts the response time down dramatically for shutter lag. Mm -hmm. So because you're only moving one part of the curtain instead of both parts of the curtain. Right. So the one question I have is that the big challenge with medium or larger format sensors is uh, the glass it's harder to get very fast glass that performs well. So as we see here, these this is a 2.8. It's a 2.8, that's a 4. Prime. 
This is for this a, is a four, four, and that's a four. So we're typically like one stop slower than your equivalents on a full frame camera. What's the low light performance like for this, the ISO? So far, it's been fantastic from what I've seen of it. Um, yeah. I've done some portrait work at 3200, 6400. I did just some wow. uh, some kind of a, a low light out on a sidewalk testing at 12.8, uh, and I was amazed that the, the, the noise was just barely worse mm -hmm. than 6400. Mm -hmm. This is an, an incredible, it's the sensor and the processor, right. both are what do the noise reduction. So uh, the back side of this sensor is 100% our processor, and that does all the heavy lifting. In terms of lenses, though, I want to say that not only a few months down the road, we have a 110 millimeter f2 coming. Hmm. So uh, we are That's addressing incredible. this. Yeah, we yeah. are addressing the speed issue. We, we can get fast lenses, and we're one of the best glass manufacturers in the world. So. We're, we're way we're at the top of the game on addressing that issue. Yeah. So but right now we have these three lenses, which is this is a, a 32-64. Correct. This is the 120 macro, and both of those are F4s. And this is the 63 millimeter prime F2. So more of a, All a three normal. of these will be available at the same time as the camera is released. Okay. This 120, so. I would guess, is a beautiful uh, lens for shooting portraits or shooting any kind of. I mean, it'll be a beautiful lens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'd like, uh, that's what we're going to shoot a portrait tonight with it, and I'll, that's what we'll use probably primarily. I, I will say the really great thing about larger format sensors is you can shoot wider and still get that shallow. It's shallow much remote. shallower depth yeah, of There's a lot more separation yeah. from F4 the back. F4 on this, I would guess, is going to look very similar to 2.8. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very yeah. similar. Yeah. Right. So on this camera, do you think you can handhold this, uh, the 120 yeah. millimeter comfortably? Oh yeah, I have, I have, yeah, totally. So yeah, one of the portraits that, that, that you like so much, that was all handheld. It's, it's so not incredibly course. heavy. I yeah. mean, this is no. easily comparable to like a 5D with it a, felt like with that a similar to me. lens. Yeah. yeah, with a 24 70, or 7200 on yeah, it, it feels yeah. very similar to that. I'd say even maybe lighter than that. Yeah, maybe so. But you know what, what I loved about the image that Michael showed me at WPPI was that the image um, I looked at the grain, it was shot at 3200 mm -hmm. uh, ISO, and the grain was just, it was fabulous. It didn't have that kind of RGB artifacting in it. It, was, it felt more like film to me. It looked more like a film kind of transition uh, from the highlights into the shadows. I thought it was really beautiful. What I saw was really gorgeous. So if, uh, if I could, I just want to give a shout out to the subject of that portrait is Ed Lackman of the ASC, a very uh, well-renowned cinematographer. He was a willing subject. Uh, but again, that, that I, our engineers in Japan have found a remarkable way of somehow scrubbing out the chroma noise. You know, there's mm -hmm. luma noise and chroma mm -hmm. noise, and mm -hmm. somehow we don't have chroma noise in our images. I, That's I, incredible. I don't, I don't know how they do it, but they do. How many frames per second on this? Uh, it'll do three. Three frames, three frames per second. second. This is not a sport Hel shooter's camera, no. but three no. frames per second That's for studio for me work, and, yeah. wedding, portraits, it's adequate. Yeah. What's the Most buffer medium. time, though, when you, as you're starting to shoot? I mean, are you going to start to clog as it's reading? Not if you use the high-speed cards. Okay. If you use a regular SD card, you're going to get yourself into trouble. But if you use the high-speed cards, which are the uh, UHS-2 spec, mm -hmm. it's the ones that have the double rows of contacts, these things are uh, somewhere around 300 megabytes per second. They're blazingly oh, fast, That's really and fast. It, it clears the buffer very, very fast. Does it? So, okay. Yeah, you can certainly test that later on. Yeah, we will definitely do that. It, yeah. Uh, one of the things I really like about this camera is the display, because so many mirrorless cameras rely on the screen on the back for everything. This uh, display on the top of it is awesome. <laughs> it's like an actual, it's like a DSLR. It you know? is. And we're talking fabulous. about this little, what we call the sub-monitor display, and you can turn on the backlight, you know. Uh, this is just information, so there's no image that shows right, up in there, right. but, and you can customize it. So it'll tell you shutter speed, f-stop, ISO, white balance, all that kind of stuff. So you can actually have a completely clean view in the viewfinder um, you know, with no information whatsoever on there because it's all there if you want it. Well, so. the real estate is large enough there that you can see it quickly. Even with the, the Canon, sometimes I'm like, which, you know, yeah. which setting is yeah. this? <laughs> yeah, no, really, uh, that I think is fabulous. Well, since we're talking about monitors, um, you know, the LCD, the viewfinder, 
you know, you can customize whatever view in there. Like I say, you can get a totally clean view if you want. Um, this is fully. Got this is fully articulable, by the it, way. It does. It tilts well, uh, tilts up, up at ninety. Down, I guess that's, that's forty five. But it also you didn't see this, so it does actually Whoa. pop out. Oh, nice. So yeah. So well, that can, is that's nice. For overhead verticals or underhand verticals. Well, yeah. and in saying that, there's a grip on here that goes yep. on the side of it, so you can now have a vertical grip on this thing, which is incredible. If I can get it on there. Yeah, basically, it, just, it fits, and it was really well designed. So I'm not going to try to screw it on right now, but you can see the shutter button is down here right instead of up yeah, here at the top. Not trying to most cameras hold that. put it, yeah. And um, I forgot the the one of the cool things we started coming out with on uh, the last couple of cameras is the joystick for autofocus. So back here is a joystick, and that moves the autofocus point around. It's dedicated just to that. Mm. If I push it in, it lights up green, and now I can use the wheel, and I can make the spot bigger or smaller. Oh, that's oh, great. And it's got, over, awesome. it's got over 400 AF points. So, so it's 400 AF points, so all yep. the way corner to corner. Corner to corner. That's what drives corner me insane, even yep. on the old Mark III. you got a little center area there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You can yeah, put yeah, it totally. anywhere you want. That's you know, incredible. I love how it's history. dedicated, too, because yep. a lot of the time you have to push through the menus. Yeah, and put, yeah. find it. And it's back here in a vertical grip as well. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, so autofocus, is it fast? I mean, that's something we're going to test. You know, see yeah. how fast the autofocus is and how quickly it'll bring things in? For a medium format, it actually is. Mm -hmm. So compared to a DSLR, you know, the answer is no. Yeah. Uh, however, so far, you know, I've probably had about, we've been doing demos, I had sneak peek previews in various cities around, probably had several hundred photographers have had their hands on it, and nobody has actually said it's bad. They've all said, oh, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. So it is contrast detect only. There's no phase detect on this. Mm -hmm. uh, but the good thing about that is contrast detect is more accurate than phase detect. And in this kind of scenario with that resolution, you want accuracy more than speed. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is, and, I, and I'm just, and tell me if you think my perspective about this is wrong, but it seems to me like this is a different way of working. It, this is not a sports thing, this is not a fast thing. This is a more deliberate, you're going to set up, you're going to shoot. So you're not trying to, you know, I, as long as it's fast enough to keep up with a person as they move around, which I'm sure it mm -hmm. is, you know, you're going to be able to get what you need. You're not trying to follow race cars. With well, it. and for studio stuff, when your model's moving this much, you know, like yeah. it's... Although I see this, a uh, buddy of mine is, is heading off, retiring, and wants to just shoot, por uh, shoot landscapes. Oh, and he yeah. wants to backpack and carry a camera to shoot landscapes. Mm -hmm. and I'm going, I told him, you've got to check this camera out. Because yeah. in my mind, you now have a, a medium format, large sensor you can put in your backpack and carry around. It's not going to weigh a million pounds. And you can do incredible port or incredible landscapes with it. Right. Thing. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, in terms of motion, I mean, uh, a few weeks ago, we had a studio set up. We had ballet dancers. Uh, and they were leaping and spinning across the, you know, the, the, the set. And uh, three frames a second, they would, had no problem keeping up with them. I got some very, very cool dramatic shots and stuff like that. So I know if it can do that for a wedding photographer that's on the move, you know, yeah. that should work perfectly yeah. fine. And for a location fashion shoot, it should be more than adequate. Yeah. Absolutely. So. Which is what you're going to want. A location right. fashion shoot, I see mm -hmm. this as a camera in that kind yeah. of world. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, speaking of location, did I mention it's weather sealed? No, you did not mention it. It is. Whoa. It is weather sealed. That, that wow. is incredible. Um, I have that's not had this out in the rain yet, but I know like our X-T2 camera, which is their smaller one, I've had that out in a pouring, pouring deluge of water, and it was absolutely 100% fine. Well, we can test that, that out pretty easily. Yeah, that's not a problem. We can test that here. <laughs> let's, let's, let's not for this one. This is still my pre-production, so let's not, let's not, you know, when you buy the camera, you want to do that, that's fine. Um, the EVF on this is actually, it's a very high res. It is actually an OLED, an organic LED. Oh, wow. Uh, which, as you know, from the you know the high production grade video monitors these days are OLEDs. They're not quite mm. in the consumer market yet, but they are actually in the broadcast world. And as you saw, the uh, the viewfinder comes off. That's the incredible. viewfinder comes with the body, so uh -huh. it's included. Um, we have an option coming uh, later on that is going to let you tilt the viewfinder up 90 degrees. That's nice. That'd and we'll cool. let you do 45 left and That'd right. Really cool. But that's an optional piece for people who want it. Just a quick question. I want to get your perspective. Who do you see using this camera? Well, certainly, like you said, landscape photographers. Absolutely. Probably um, number one. Fashion shooters, uh, probably number two. Wedding shooters, probably neck and neck with that. I would say those three. Um, 
Definitely still life, tabletop. I yeah. did a whole bunch of tabletop. I was just having a great time, and uh, the, the sharpness was blowing my mind. It was like the first time I did 8x10. I, I couldn't believe what I was yeah, getting. Yeah, tabletop that, would be so, fabulous. Yeah. Anything that you want, that yeah. large sensor, and, and that's just an yeah. incredible image. Now, it so. does 1080p video. Okay. Uh, it's actually pretty nice. The compression on it is very, very clean. Um, uh, you know, it, it will not do 4K. It will not do UHD. Uh, but if you want to do video for commercial and you want shallow, shallow depth of field, <laughs> that could actually come in handy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one final question for me: What's the what's Fujifilm's Fuji measured dynamic range for this? Fourteen stops. Fourteen stops. Yeah, that's good. Right. Well, that's incredible. Give us a quick rundown on battery life. Uh, other mirrorless out there just really suffer with uh, when it comes to battery life. Well, the mirrorless is because again, like I said, you have live live view constantly. So uh, you're feeding a video mm -hmm. monitor, so it's not going to have the same life as a DSLR. Uh, the official measurements are around three, four. Oh, I'm sorry, about 400 shots. So um, it's a it's a pretty big battery. Uh, it's right here in the side, so not in the bottom. It's in the side, so you can change it while you're on That's a tripod. Really nice. That is so nice. Uh, oh my gosh. The, the rating, the rating <laughs> is like else think of that. Yeah. Shot. Well, the hand grip also has it in the side as well. So, so with the hand place. grip, you're looking at probably 800 shots, maybe. Yeah. So you have yeah. two batteries, one in the hand grip and one in the camera. Then. Right, and there is an AC uh, power adapter option, so you can run it off yeah. of a wall wart, you mm -hmm. know, and just mm -hmm. have it run all. Does day this long, have an right? internal intervalometer? It does. That, yes. that for awesome. doing, yes. that's great. Absolutely. Yep. All of our cameras have that. We call it interval timer shooting. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So, what is the range? Can you do everything from? It's, it's infinite. Infinite? Yep. Perfect. Yep. Boy, that's Until incredible. Until it runs out of power. Yeah. Michael, thank you so much for coming and uh, sharing your knowledge with us. It's just nice to have someone here who has all the answers so that we don't get. <laughs> People on the trolls on our uh, channel going, what's the matter with you guys? <laughs> well, the great thing about this is nobody has this camera, so nobody can do that. That's right. So Michael's going to head off, and we're going to he's going to leave the camera here with us to go out and test the ISO, test the handling, and uh, we're going to shoot something tonight with a girl and a flame in her hand. So it'll be really fun. So, well, thank you to Michael for coming to join us today, and uh, to Fujifilm for bringing the camera over so we can take a look at it. Thanks for having me. Let's take a look at our ISO test. I mean, 100 ISO looks fabulous. It's clean. It's, I mean, just looks fabulous. The great thing about these cameras with the high megapixel counts is you get the super clean blacks. That's the most appealing thing to me. Gorgeous blacks. I mean, the gorgeous transitions. I mean, I don't see a difference at 200. I don't see much of a difference at 400. At 800, I, don't I feel really. like you have to get up to 1600 where the stuff in the background that's a little more out of focus and a little more dimly lit starts to have the grain starts to build. But it's that beautiful kind of film looking grain. It doesn't have the RGB noise in it. Yeah, not at all. I mean, I'm not seeing any RGB artifact. No, in not it. at all. The, the, the noise you see is really just luminance variations in the pixel. Yeah. So but even if we really get up good. to, uh, here's uh, 12,800, and you, it, you start to see it in the shadows on her nose. You start yes. to see it breaking up pretty good. Some loss of detail in mm -hmm. like her eyelashes and stuff where the noise is interfering with the image. But. Uh, in the background, but you know, it's I mean, very it's, a pleasing It's look, a usable though. photo. <laughs> it's going to be hard to see on, as we post these, it's going to be hard to see these and be able to see what's going on here just looking at your uh, computer yeah, screen. Yeah. So if you go over to thuslandlines.com, you can download all these images. Uh, and just on that front page, there'll be a link that'll take you to where you can get your downloads. You can download all these and look at them. If you're interested in this camera, download the JPEGs. Again, yeah. it's JPEGs, it's not RAWs. Uh, so we don't have the RAWs to, uh, we can... We, we can give we them. Can, we can can give you the raws, but you won't it'll be able to process them until yeah, later. until they get the uh, stuff out. So we'll give you the raws as well on there, so you have them to look at, so at each of these ISOs. Then we took it outside and just shot it around a little bit, just to give us an idea of what we liked and how it felt. And what were your first impressions? Um, I mean, it has that medium format kind of feel. The separation between your subject and the background is really great. Um, I like the response, even though we're shooting JPEGs. I've always liked Fuji's curve response, their colors are really, really great. So even just shooting these JPEGs, I really like it. We look at this image of JP in front of the, the hedge, and the colors are just awesome. They are awesome. That's what I love about it. They're just really beautiful color, sharp. It's, uh, you, you can shoot bursts. We were doing on bursts of three, uh, and it does start to buffer. It starts to, to slow down when you're shooting. Yeah. And, 
So, you know, if you're doing something like with a uh, fashion shoot, you want to shoot a lot really fast, as in anything that's going to be a medium format, you know, it's you've got to move all that data and it's going to be a little slower. It's, I mean, it, again, it's about what are your applications for this camera. I think it's a really, really cool camera. This is probably my favorite camera we've talked about so far. I'm kind of feeling that as a still camera. It's pretty oh, yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. But at the same time, it's not for everybody. If you're shooting uh, sports or something like that, you need higher response time, uh, less buffer, then you, I mean, I just look elsewhere, but for what it's trying to do, I think this camera is really great, and it's coming in cheaper than all of its competitors. So well, and you got a 50 plus megapixel camera on this sensor that's one and a half times the size of a full frame. Yeah, so the sensor is 44 by 33 millimeters. So um, I don't I don't know the math behind it, but it's significantly larger than larger. a full frame. There was one qualm, we, so we were curious, you know, we were doing the burst modes and stuff, what's it like with the electronic shutter versus the mechanical shutter? And so we activated the electronic shutter mode, which is all something I'm interested in because sometimes I like to take, take photos without people knowing, especially because I have a two-year-old. As soon as that kid knows there's a camera click, out, click. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's done, you know. So we turned on the electronic shutter, and this is the one thing about this camera that kind of disappointed me. In an electronic shutter mode, you will experience rolling shutter as if you're shooting video because it's just an electronic scan and it is awful on this camera. It, surprisingly awful. It's, it's pretty bad. I mean, when I was moving around, it was kind of jello -y and it, it, I was really, really <laughs> stretched. It was kind of interesting. Yeah, and I mean, if you're hand holding the camera, it has, you have to hold really still because any sort of movement is going to squash or distort but your image. But this is only in the electronic shutter mode. Yeah. When we were shooting the manual shutter, we didn't have any of these problems. I mean, it shot great. Yeah, we compared. If, and if your subject's moving, the mechanical shutter's clean, the electronic shutter will, will uh, skew. So it's not a big deal. This is really a still, uh, for the applications, I'm, I wouldn't really use this to shoot my kid probably or to shoot street photography or anything like that where you really want that electronic shutter, so it's not it's, a huge deal. It's not the application. Yeah. yeah. You're not trying to sneak around. I mean, it's too big. But it yeah. is something to know. I mean, it's a mirrorless camera, so people kind of expect certain features to come along with that, and that particular feature isn't really good on this camera. Yeah. So my sense of this camera overall is you've got a great form factor. It feels good in your hands. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel too large. I absolutely love this. Uh, the side grip mount so you can go to vertical. I would use this because it gives you two batteries for one yeah, and for sure. uh, gives you the ability to, to take the camera into a vertical really simply. I, I just think the camera has great color. It's really easy to use. Um, it just feels like in, in that uh, medium format world that I love, you know, as a still photographer for years shooting on the medium format cameras. This is a great camera, gorgeous camera. I mean, the cool thing about this camera is it's sitting in a great place where it's smaller, the next the next cheapest, so there is one uh, medium format camera that is cheaper than this, that's a Pentax 645Z, which is a very cool camera, but that is a, an SLR, and so the, the body is much larger. Much it's larger. not as travelable as this. Yeah, this is pretty compact to move around. Yeah. Um, so that's an advantage for this guy, and this is still cheaper than the only other mirrorless medium format camera, which is the Hasselblad X1D, I believe. Yeah. And that's, I think, two, three thousand dollars more expensive. Yeah, it's around ten for the body, and yeah, the lenses are 10. more expensive. Yep. So, uh, and super awesome option. I mean, literally, if I take this lens off, this will go into the same place in my camera bag where my Mark Threes go. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, is it slides incredible. right into that same place, so. It definitely beats my wife's uh, Pentax 645 <laughs> film camera. Film which camera, is those, are much camera. <laughs> yeah, those are big cameras. Those are big cameras. Those are great cameras, but they were yeah. big. Yeah. All right, so I love the camera. Uh, download the images. Uh, thank you to Roscoe, who sponsors our camera comparisons and our camera reviews. Yeah, we um, shot that ISO test using Roscoe lights. Those things are awesome. Did. The vector lights are fabulous lights. They really are. The color is great. They're bicolor. Yep. Yeah, love those things. Yep, they're fabulous. So anyway, thank you for all your input, and let's hear what you think of this camera in the comments. Download the images. Go to thesignlines.com and download the images. So keep those cameras rolling. Keep on clicking. We've got a great giveaway this month. It's a sound shark, a preamp, and a couple of lights, and a bag. So get over to thesignlines.com and sign up.
don't forget to subscribe to The Smiling Lens. Like us on Facebook. Tell your mother about us. Tell your mother's mother about us. <laughs>